Welcome back. I hope that you have been able to solve those challenges on your own after we went over the definitions together. But if not, then don't let your heart be troubled. We can work together and come up with a solution. So let's get started. Let's start with challenge number one on the left hand side. As it states, we're going to create total sales for line sales amount just for the produce category and we'll also count number of customers and we'll create a pivot table to do so and we'll also make sure that any selections users make will be reflected in this total. So I'm going to right click and select new sheet object from which we'll select chart and since we want to create pivot table that's what we'll select. And as we discussed in the prior lesson, we're going to have two dimensions. One is the category name and the other is year. So we'll select category name, year. Now we're about to construct our first set analysis expression in ClickView. So as I said, set analysis syntax only works within an aggregation function. With that said, we will use sum because we are trying to create a total sales aggregation expression here. So set analysis syntax start with the curly braces this is for the record set and ends with curly braces within which the modifier starts with angle bracket and ends with angle bracket all right since our set identifier is dollar which will then respect the selections users make either we can type dollar or we choose not to because ClickView will implicitly replace dollar when we do not type any set identifier. But for sake of this exercise, we will type dollar as our identifier. Now, as we discussed, the modifier will be category name and we want to calculate total just for produce category. So we'll type category. And if you type several characters, ClickView will give you a list of field names to choose from we'll choose category name and there's always an equal sign and on the right hand side of the equal sign the values will be in the curly braces within single code since it's a string value so we'll type produce and and the curly braces and then finally we'll use line sales amount which is the measure we're using to calculate total sales value. So this is our first set analysis expression. Again, to quickly recap, dollar is set identifier. Within the modifier, left hand side, we have a field name, category name, and the right hand side, we have a value within a single code, since it's a literal value, which is produced. So this will be our total sales. And we also want to count number of customers. So for that, we will add another expression and that will be a count function because we're trying to count number of customers. Again, within the curly braces, we will use dollars or identifier. Then we'll start with the angle bracket. And here again, we'll say category name is equal to produce. And we'll end with angle bracket and this time we'll use distinct qualifier since we only want to calculate distinct number of customers for each category so then we'll use company name as that's the field that contains customer name so Instead of sum, we are using count. The modifier is same, and we're counting distinct number of customers. So the label here will be number of customers. And let's finish. Let's uh, make a few changes. We'll go to the caption, turn that caption off, turn the borders, and we can also go to presentation and have this table fully expanded. As you see, it's not showing any other category since we have the expression calculated just for produce. We can also quickly make few changes, go into number format and make it money. And we can add dollar sign if needed. 
and that's it. So there we go. So we have our first chart that shows sales for each year for produce category and number of customers. We're going to add few filters here. As a matter of fact, we do have a filter panel. So we can probably select values from this filter panel needed. Let's select condiment as category. And as you see, that has no impact since we're only calculating value for produce category. But if I select any other value, such as if I select produce, then these are the values we have. Let's select few products from the produce and go back and see those user selections do get reflected in the total sales as far as number of customers. Now let's clear this and it's always good to validate this number. So how do you do that? You can always create a simple text box that shows, let's say, sum of line sales amount And let's select produce as category and we'll come back here and let's select 1996, which is showing $13,885. So there you go. So this value is match. So it's always good to make sure that the expression you build is working accurately. And to do so, always have an independent validation of the expression that you construct. So that is our first challenge. For challenge number two, we will go over the definition one more time. As it dictates here, we want to create a bar chart that shows total sales for a particular zip code for each year. So let's right click and select sheet object in a chart. Again, it's bar chart and as we discussed our dimension is year and our expression is familiar since we've already constructed once before we start with an aggregation function within which we'll start with curly braces for the record set and then we'll have angle bracket and the curly braces now within the angle bracket we'll add postal code and that is going to be 98033 again we'll start with curly braces for the element set 98033 and of course line cells amount as the field so this is the total sales here. And since we want to ignore user selections, we have to make sure that we select one as the identifier, which is very important. So finish this and this is how our bar chart looks. Let's make a few quick changes. We'll turn the, the borders off, we turn the caption off, and we'll also go into style and make it horizontal. Okay, since the identifier is one, if any selections we make on any of these filters will not have any impact on our chart. So to prove that, we'll select certain values and go back to chart. And as you see, the chart has no impact no matter what selections I make. I can make any number of selections and those selections do not have any bearing on the values that this chart displays. So these are the two challenges. Hopefully you have solved on your own. If not, then now is the time for you to do so. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.